Um, and actually kind of to that end, we've got uh, a pair of U.S. representatives that are basically telling Apple, hey, there is some amazing new technology that's coming out that can do some amazing things, and your absurd old thinking policies might be getting in its way. We, you, 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 you referenced earlier um, how kind of infamous, infamous Apple is for how much they enforce their 30% thing, and this is another example of them doing exactly that. So this is uh, reps... Uh, Billy Rockus and Schakowsky uh, have sent a letter to Apple basically saying like, hey, we need to better understand some of your policies and your, your iOS app store policies um, and in regards to blockchain and NFTs um, and dig distributed ledger technologies because you might be getting in the way of innovation uh, and American technology uh, leadership. So uh, just a few little um, points that I highlighted here. Um, they expressed their concern about Apple's walled garden policies effect on the development of apps using these tools, which might harm, uh, innovation in America, uh, from American companies in this area. And we've seen this for years. I remember it was like 2013 or 2014, the very first time there was, there was an app that someone created as an iOS app. Uh, and I think it was just a simple wallet and it was, I don't remember if it was initially accepted and then Apple bounced it or if they just dragged their feet on accepting it or I don't know I don't remember exactly what the controversy was but kind of from the start you could tell that they were against this technology and I think it was even I'm pretty sure that was even before they were making their 30% cut on because they didn't open up their payment system to all of their app store uh, developers yet um, but it's gotten just worse and worse since then because now they allow some things on. Certainly there's a lot of crypto wallets that are, that are allowed in the app store, um, block explorers, lots of other different types of things. But again, they're saying like any financial transaction that happens through an app on our app store, uh, needs to be conducted on our rails and thus we need to earn 30% from Right. It. That's been the issue. I think as I understand it is the in-app purchases kind of things mm -hmm. that are happening, you know, on chain, basically off of the app store, not using fiat payments, and therefore they aren't able to directly enforce that 30% cut. Exactly. Yeah. And it's usually come up, it, it's come up with games. In the, the case of uh, Epic Games was the big lawsuit that was happening for a long time, um, where uh, Fortnite had something called V-Bucks. It was the game's official tokens. Um, and I don't know if that was a, an actual blockchain based thing it, it wouldn't necessarily need to be if it's an in-game kind of a currency but the point is if it can be transacted inside of the game or really outside of apple's uh, payment rails on a blockchain then apple has no ability to enforce their 30 percent cut um, so their the only recourse is to just kick them off of the app store exactly yeah. well they just demand hey give us our 30 percent and then you know, this this Coinbase wallet was rejected due to this issue because they were, you know, allowing for the, the, the exchange of NFTs and stuff like that. And they kicked them off saying, hey, we want our 30 percent. Um, and Coinbase responds with for anyone who understands how NFTs and blockchains work, this is not possible. Mm -hmm. Their in, their proprietary in-app system doesn't actually support crypto. So we actually can't do that. Um, I wonder if people's mood would change if Apple decided, you know, if, if Apple Pay itself became basically, you know, blockchain decentralized payment rails kind of thing, like they ran it on XRP or something, I don't know. Um, and so then it would then become possible to capture that 30%. If it was running on some sort of distributed ledger uh, technology, it would be possible. Would it be justifiable though? You know what I mean? Like that's right. part of the, the, the counter issue is that right. the asking for 30% of every single transaction that happens across the board, it's like, they very much sharecropping, like you were talking about. I mean, earlier. I would take issue with saying that if you understand how it works, you would understand it's not possible. I would say you would understand it's not enforceable. And there's a huge difference there. It's certainly possible. It's just that it's not enforceable. And Well, it would require, because if the payment is happening over, let's say, over the if it's an NFT and it's happening over the Ethereum blockchain, there's no way for Apple to cap. The, Apple has never given developers, this is my Ethereum wallet. So it can't happen within Fair the technology enough. itself. It would require developers to add a second payment and if it's coming from someone's wallet then that wallet would need to exchange into fiat get deposited into someone's bank thing and then so it's it's kind of not possible sure you could add a lot of complexity to build it but on both sides it's kind of like it kind of reveals that apple doesn't really understand this tech or at least 
the policymakers and law and 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 kind of legal folks there that keep on enforcing this don't actually understand how this stuff works. Right. Yeah. It feels like I don't know. I, I, it would be hard for me to believe that Apple doesn't understand the technology. Apple, you know, the, the engineers and the, and the, history, the ex yeah. executives, right? Yeah. yeah. However, <laughs> it would certainly behoove them to play dumb. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. In order to and they continue seem to, be. to enforce their thirty percent. They seem to be playing dumb. This is this is how they actually announced their tight blockchain rules in October. Apps. Hello. No, you're all clicky. You might not hear me, but it looks like it's going out, so I'm gonna keep okay. talking. Yeah. Sorry, guys. Sorry. Hopefully, there's audio because we're just wrapping this up still. Yeah. Um. Uh. So apps may not use their own mechanisms to unlock content or functionality, including crypto and NFTs. So it's just kind of like it's a little bit insanely cumbersome. They're basically just saying, even though it's now technically possible to do this kind of a thing within your own software, we won't allow that. And so they very much are getting in the way of innovation. You know, like they're like, we're, we're super happy about the amount of money we're making from the app store. And the last thing we want to do is, is give that up. And so we're perfectly fine to get in the way of technology that would prevent this, uh, prevent us from getting our cuts. And that just kind of sucks coming from the company that was known for innovation and, you know, the pirate flag. And oh all that man, stuff. I know. Right. It's yeah. just, it's, it's the natural cycles of a company to have this kind of issue. The thing that I would say is that while I'm sort of glad to see legislators calling attention to this issue, I am hesitant to think that legislation is necessarily the issue here. The issue True. is not, you know, there has been a lot of discussion about the monopolies in big tech, about Section 230, mm -hmm, about, mm -hmm. you know, how we should be regulating commerce and free speech on the web. And I would say that the answer is that we need regulation that's going to support Web3 innovation and that the technology yes. of Web3 will then provide the solutions to the issues of speech, to the issues Very of well put. Uh, information flow, to the issues yes. of monopolies yes. even. Yes. Because all those things that the laws are trying to will protect us solve against. Yes. monopolies yes but until the f the regulatory environment is safe enough mm -hmm. for entrepreneurs to really build competitive products we're going to continue to have this problem yeah i agree i agree